There is an awareness of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML, in uh, taking care of MS patients. PML is a, an infection of the brain that's due to uh, a Popova virus called JC virus. Now, normally, JC virus, which is ubiquitous, 25% of the population is shedding JC virus in their urine at any point in time. It normally causes no issues whatsoever. It's basically a benign agent. Unless you are immunocompromised, uh, particularly with cell-mediated immunity, and then you are at risk to have the JC virus cause an infection of the brain that can be fatal in a significant proportion of individuals. Natalizumab was approved in 2004, and approximately three months after it got approved, it was pulled off the market because of a couple of cases of PML that came up in the clinical trials. It came back on the market in 2006 with a black box warning, concerns for PML risk. I have to be honest that this drug probably would have been changing the entire methodology of how we treat MS if it didn't have that risk. It's a very effective drug, but this concern for PML is a big problem. Still, over the years, we have learned how to manage it to some degree. Now, the way this drug works is that it binds to a molecule on your lymphocytes and it prevents them from migrating into the central nervous system. They can't cross through the blood-brain barrier. So in essence, what happens is the tissue becomes immunosuppressed. And because of that, we get a concern for certain kinds of infections, particularly PML. There's been a evolution of a test, the JC virus antibody test, that has evolved over the last five, eight years or so, roughly, um, that really gives us the capability to give patients a risk profile based on the data from the number we get back from the test. If they're negative, we would feel more comfortable that this patient's at low risk. Not that they're at no risk, but they're at low risk to develop PML. If they come back positive, we worry that this is somebody who might be more worrisome that you may have to take them off the drug at some point. So because of that, we think that natalizumab has a place in the, in the treatment algorithm, but it really is at this point, mostly for the relapsing group of patients who are either JC virus antibody negative, or you could keep them on it if they're positive with a low index for some period of time. But after two years, you worry that that's going to be a problem because that's when the risk of PML goes up after two years of continuous use of that drug. So has not really been able to show a huge benefit in patients of the progressive phenotype but at least in the relapsing phenotype, it's a very good drug. We're still left with the idea that we don't have any treatments for secondary progressive MS. The natalizumab ASCEND trial was trying to address the possibility that natalizumab could be used to treat secondary progressive disease. So they enrolled patients into that trial with the idea that we can slow the rate of progression independent of patients who are having clinical attacks. Unfortunately, it did not show a benefit in terms of slowing the rate of progression. It did show a benefit with regards to the other typical relapsing markers, things such as clinical relapses and preventing MRI lesions, but it did not show a slowing of the rate of disability progression, which is very disappointing because it's a very powerful drug in the relapsing population. We thought maybe it would help here as well. Unfortunately, it is not. So you could ask the question, is it a wise idea to keep a patient who has relapsing disease, who now moved into secondary progressive MS, to keep them on natalizumab, particularly if they're JC virus antibody negative? I don't know that that makes a lot of sense at this point, and that's a, an unknown. Based on the data from the trial, we'd say probably not a great idea because the data didn't really support it. Now, there's a, an idea that well, what other safety concerns would you need to be concerned about? 
We know that there are infusion reactions, there's you know, some other issues that go on with natalizumab, but even though for the most part it's a fairly safe drug outside of the PML risk, there are some concerns out there for small case reports of a variety of different things. What people have started to think about at this point is, can you change the dosing frequency to some degree? Instead of doing every four weeks, maybe you could go to every six or eight weeks. And they did some studies looking at that and found that at 12 weeks, it's too long a period of time between infusions and the disease activity starts to come back. At four weeks, you're good. At six weeks, seems to be okay. And at eight weeks, maybe there's a little bit of breakthrough disease activity, but it's minor. So can you change the safety profile by changing the frequency of infusions? That was looked at and is currently being looked at. Small group of uh, clinicians around the country did an extended um, dosing schedule like that, and they were able to show maybe that it reduced the risk of PML. They didn't have enough patients really to answer that question, but there is a large trial starting up now to really address whether moving them to every six weeks could be more beneficial in terms of reducing risk for PML and keep the efficacy of the compound. But when it comes to patients with progressive disease, I don't know that this is going to be the right approach. That's, that's the problem we're left with.